Hey guys, it's uh, Peyton over at Florida Fresh Silkworms. Uh, I'm just going to show you what I do here um, each and every day. Um, what I do is I get my containers. As you can see, I have lots of containers. This is just a fourth of my batch. I have four more containers f filled like this with eggs. Um, as you can see, you can see a bunch of white little poppy seeds. Um, what that is, is the empty, is the empty eggs of all the silkworms. And what I'm doing now is once they all hatch, I have about, I would say a 99% hatch rate out of this, uh, season of eggs. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting fresh food in there for them. Uh, every 24 hours you put fresh food in and you leave them in these containers for about a week and then I can transfer them into this big tub. So, um, what the end product looks like is when I'm done putting the food in. is like this. Uh, you can see the green food is the fresh food. And you can see all the little tiny babies crawl into the fresh food. Uh, there, once all the eggs hatch, there's no order of how I just put the food in there. I kind of just laid around the old food. And, oh, there's a guy over there. I got to move. And uh, by this time, once they, this is about the third day in. Uh, by this time, they can crawl to the food with uh, ease. I don't have to worry about um, guiding them. Uh, so what I do is I don't. Obviously, I don't touch the containers. Um, so you want to have sterile hands. So what I use is the 70% isopropyl, or however you say that, rubbing alcohol. Uh, I just put a little bit in my hand, and then I can I just kind of rub it all over my hands. Um, this gets all the bacterias off my hands, so if I do need to move some food or when I'm touching inside of the container on accident, it doesn't put any bacteria in the containers. Normally I use this little tool right here. Uh, you can go to like Michael's or Joann's. It's a little tiny sponge brush and uh, it doesn't hurt anything. The only bad thing about it is, I'll show you, is if you can see if I can focus. It's not going to focus. Oh, there it goes. You can get a little bit of worms and stuff like that on the tip of the brush. All you do is just you gently scrape it off on the food. Um, so that's not a big deal. Uh, you just got to, you know, double check the brush when you're done doing all this worm stuff. And you got to double check your area around the table that I'm working on. And make sure that... Uh, Make sure that I'm not missing any little guys if they fall off the brush or something like that on accident. So, I just wanted to give you a little inform of what I do every day. Uh, it takes about, let's see, I got 16, 30, I got 37 containers that I do this to every day. So it takes me a good three hours. Um, so what I... Yeah, so what I do for the food is I have this Ziploc bag. You can go to Walmart, get a thing of one quart Ziploc bags for like $2. And you can reuse it. I reuse it for three or four feedings. Um, what I do is I cut a little tiny, little tiny nozzle at the tip, kind of like how you would make double eggs or do frosting for a cake. And then I just load about two or three scoops of my food in there. And then I squeeze it out. It's probably the easiest method on the planet of the Earth. Uh, so for two dollars, it lasts me a good month of feeding. I put, I don't over put food in there just in case if I need, you know, if I don't, I don't want to waste food. So I do two scoops at a time, and I kind of just estimate how much more food I'm gonna use. So. 
so yeah, I just wanted to show you guys, you know, what I do every day, like I said, and it's uh, quite a bit of work, um, especially when you're hatching 25,000 to 50,000 worms a week. Uh, so this is, like I said, just one step of the process. Um, what I'm going to be working on today, since these guys hatch today, is actually getting the other containers clean so that I can put more eggs in it. So then I'll have up to 37 times 2, 74 containers uh, half with a or half with hatchings and half with another twenty five thousand eggs, and do it all over again. Um, like I said, I'm trying to make a company here where we have you know smalls and mediums uh, year round. Uh, you never have to worry about it, and I'm gonna make sure not to lose my colony this time. Back in November, I lost my colony, and I had to get another. Let's see, 1,500, yeah, I had to get 1,500 eggs, and then what I did is I hatched those eggs, and then I just used those and raised them to moths, and I had 1,200 females and 300 males, and what I did is I bred all those, I got 104,000 fertile eggs, and that will last me three months, and that's how, usually that's how long the season is. It's about three months I can I can keep the eggs fertile. So so within so within three months I'll hatch all the eggs. What I want to do is uh, get a hundred thousand a month. So I need to save some out of here and get about three hundred thousand eggs for next time. And that will put me to one point three million worms a year. And I'm working on a contract with a friend up in Georgia. Uh, we're going to try to see if we can match his dubia sales. He sells 3 million dubias a month, so we're working on it. And uh, we're going to try to see if we can match, or at least half match, his sales to help him out. But uh, yeah, as you can see, as I'm just talking now, if it focuses, most of them cr are crawling to the new food. So... Uh, let me show you my setup over here. This is my rack. Uh, I got worms up here. Uh, heat rises, so it keeps them at a good temperature that I can keep them the same uh, temperature around. I keep them around 78 degrees so they don't grow too much, but I do feed them every day. And then I keep my eggs on these racks. So I got another set of eggs in here that I need to work on as you guys can see and then I'm working on the bottom rack too so that's where the other eggs are gonna be but I just use 60 watt bulbs and it keeps it around 80 to 85 uh, degrees so that's perfect for hatching perfect for raising and growing and there here is my discoids that I'm working on uh, I got about 500 in there. They're about medium size. I'm trying to raise them up to adult so I can breed all those. So hopefully within a year or two, I'll have, I'll be producing 100,000 discoids a month for everybody. So that's what I'm working on now with that. But uh, yeah, this is just a nice good update. What's going on over here. And uh, Yep. So like I said, I wanted to start making some more videos just so uh, I can inform everybody how to properly care for silkworms and how to properly care to raise them if you wanted to raise them and breed them yourself. So you guys can go ahead to my website www.floridafreshsilkworms.com Go ahead and Submit your orders now if you'd like. And you can go over to my Facebook page. Just type in Florida Fresh Silkworms in your search bar. Like the page. Get many reports and updates every day. I'm hosting contests every day. Uh, let's see. I'm hosting a contest right now. If you post uh, any kind of reptile picture, 
I'm giving away 100 free silkworms for that reptile picture, whoever wins the contest. And I want to do that once a month. Get everybody active and involved and, you know, everybody can see everybody's dragons and reptiles and chameleons and snakes. So, I just like to get involved with my customers and stuff like that. I like to have conversations. You can go ahead and send me a message, ask what's up, whatever you guys want to do. Be glad to talk to you. Be glad to help you with any questions you guys have. All right, like I said, my name's Peyton. This is Florida Fresh Silkworms. And we got lots of coming in 2014. All right, see you later, guys.